J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Be Young Again. <laughs> Not just a little flavor. <laughs> that was Be Young Again, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us take you back to last Wednesday night and show you how Jack and the rest of us celebrated New Year's Eve. Our little story opens at Jack's house around 7 p.m., where Jack, assisted by Rochester, is getting dressed for a big night of the Rochester. Rochester, where did you put the cufflinks for my dress shirt? The what? The pearl cufflinks. What happened to them? Don't you remember, boys? You said I could wear them to my lodge meeting the other night. All right, now give me my cufflink. Well, here's what happened, boys. One of them slipped out of my cup and rolled under the pool table. <laughs> uh-huh. And when I got down on my knees to pick it up, somebody faded me. <laughs> well, I'll be... So you lost one of my links in a crap game. What happened to the other one? That lasted for about three passes, then bingo. <laughs> Well, that's a fine fix you put me in. What do you expect me to do, keep my hands in my pockets all evening? Why don't you stick one of them in your vest like Napoleon? Napoleon? He was Emperor of France. I know what he was. <laughs> you don't have to tell me about Napoleon. My cousin Boo Boo's worn his hat sideways since he was 12 years old. <laughs> oh, well, I'll just have to roll these cuffs up a little and... Hope they stay there. Again. Pardon me, Mr. Benny, but what conveyance are you planning on to take you to the Biltmore Bowl? You're driving us there in the Maxwell, of course. And then afterwards, the evening is yours. Are you going to celebrate tonight, Rochester? Yes, sir. I'm going to a ball at the Central Avenue. You walk in. If you're not carried out, you get your money back club. <laughs> Well, you better walk in and out. Now, remember, Rochester, you promised not to drink tonight. Yes, sir. I'll just order martinis and eat the olives out of them. <laughs> That's right. You can eat all the olives you want. I got a bad tooth, though. I might have to float them down. <laughs> what was that? Now, Rochester... I'm warning you for the last time, when you come to work tomorrow, if you're not... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Aren't you dressed yet? I'm just finishing up. Well, hurry. Dennis is waiting outside for us in a cab. A cab? Mary, I told you Rochester's going to drive us down to the Biltmore and the Maxwell. I am not riding in that smudge pot with this new evening gown. You're going to take the Maxwell. You're not the only one that's dolled up, sister. I've got my tuxedo on. You can burn that under an orange tree, too. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll take a cab. Then come on. Let's go. I can't leave until little Carolyn Lee gets here. I promise to let her see me all dressed up. That kid is sure crazy about you, boys. Well, I have a way with the ladies, I guess. Whether they're six or sixty. But in between, you can't get one unless they're hungry. <laughs> Listen, Mary, I'm a ladies' man at any age. Then why did you phone at the last minute and make me break a date to go out with you tonight? Because Stella Buggenhaven happens to be working. <laughs> and I sent her an orchid this afternoon before I found out, like a darn fool. How do you know she's working? Because she canceled her date with me. She got to do retakes on her new picture, The Sweetheart of Gopher Gulch. <laughs> well, she looks like a gopher if I ever saw one. <laughs> Mary, if you ever looked a gopher right in the face, you'd see that they have beautiful, soft brown eyes. And so has Stella. Anyway, I'm hooked for an orchid. Oh, well. 
Come on, Jack. That's Dennis waiting for us in the cab. Well, run along. I'll join you in a minute. Here, take my violin with you. Oh, Jack, you always have to drag that fiddle every place you go. Mary, Phil's orchestra's playing there, and Phil may call on me to entertain. If he wants to remain on my program. <laughs> now, take it with you. Okay. Happy New Year, Rochester. Same to you, Miss Livingston. Well, Rochester, I guess you can run along, too. Have a good time tonight. Thanks, Mr. Benny. And look, Rochester, I know it's New Year's Eve, so I'm not going to be a wet blanket. I'll tell you what. It's okay with me if you take one drink at the stroke of midnight. There's 12 strokes, boss. Let's hit them all. (laughs) Well, I'm not going to argue about it. You can go now, Rochester. But remember, I'm putting you on your honor. That'll take care of everything. Happy New Year. (laughs) Happy New Year, Rochester. Oh, by the way, have you seen... Oh, well, I'll find it. Must be around here somewhere. Not there. I had it yesterday. I can't imagine what happened to it. I wonder if it's in the... Oh, hello, Carolyn. Hello, Jack. Well, I'm... Wearing my tuxedo. How do I look? Gee, I think you're the prettiest man in the whole world. Now, wait a minute, Carolyn. You're taking in a lot of territory. (laughs) 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 Prettiest man. By the way, honey, uh, this afternoon when we were playing those games, did did you hide something you didn't tell me about? What do you mean, Jack? Well, I've been looking all over for a certain something, and I can't find it. Did you hide it somewhere? Huh? What do you think? <laughs> I think... I think you did. Now, tell Uncle Jack where you put it. No, you'll have to look for it. Carolyn, I'm in a hurry. Now, tell me, where is it? No, you'll have to guess. Carolyn, I'm in no mood for guessing. Look, kid, I'm going out tonight. I've got to have my toupee. <laughs> Now, now, Carolyn, please, please tell me, where did you put it? Well, I was out in the yard, and a poor little bird didn't have any nest. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, I'll just fluff my hair up a little. That'll have to do, I guess. I, I have to leave now, Carolyn, so, uh, so kiss me goodnight, and I'll see you tomorrow. I thought I was going with you. Carolyn, I didn't say tonight. I said when you're 18 years old, I'll go out with you on New Year's Eve. But when I'm 18, you'll be 35 or 40. I'll take that. (laughs) Now, uh, good night, honey. Run along home and tell your mother I said Happy New Year. I want to stay here and have some bread and jam. You can have bread and jam tomorrow. Now, good night, Carolyn. Good night, Jack. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, sweetheart. Hmm. Four jars of jam already this week. (laughs) Not only that, my toupee is up in a tree somewhere. (laughs) Oh, well. I'm coming, I'm coming. Ooh. Ooh, my shin. Darn these dress shoes, they're too slippery. You gotta wear them more often. Oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. A little cockeyed, I see. <laughs> No, I... I just tripped and fell down the steps. Say, uh, you're home rather early, Mr. Billingsley. 
Aren't you going to wring out the old and ring in the new? Not tonight. I always do my laundry on Monday. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. Well, good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. A gentleman wouldn't say that. <laughs> I never saw one that didn't. <laughs> what does that mean? I can't figure him out at all. Hurry up, Jack. We can't wait here all night. I'm coming. I'm coming. Click, 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 click. Listen to that meter. 335 already. Wow. Say, Dennis, how come you haven't got a date? I thought you were going to bring a... Whoop, 340. <laughs> I, I thought, Dennis, I thought you were going to bring a girl tonight. What happened? She had to work. Oh. Oh, is she a chorus girl? No, she's a welder at Lockheed. <laughs> Well, I can, I can sympathize with you, Dennis. I had a date with Stella Be Buggenhaven tonight, but she had to do retakes on the sweetheart of, hmm, 350. I know that thing is going too fast. Go for golf. It's too bad I sent her that orchid. Well, here we are at the Biltmore Bowl. <laughs> Look at that sign. Phil Harris and his orchestra, but come in anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how much is that, buddy? Exactly what it says, three fifty. Oh. Let me pay it, Mr. Benny. No, no, Dennis, this is on me. But I insist. Ah, <laughs> nothing doing, kid. This is my treat. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> here, uh, here you are, buddy. Thanks. Come on, Mary. Oh, boy, I bet we're going to have fun tonight. Oh, boy, oh, boy, if you can't talk sense, shut up. <laughs> Come on, let's go in. There's Phil's band. I hope he reserved a good table for us. Where do you think you're going, Dennis? I'm going with you. Oh, you are, eh? Oh, Jack, for heaven's sake, what's the matter with you? I can't stand a cheapskate. That's... <laughs> ringside table, didn't he? Yeah, right near the orchestra. Yippee! Dennis, have fun, but don't kick my violin. It's right there by your foot. Yeah, I wish I had a paper hat like everybody else. What do you want with a paper hat? You're supposed to wear one on New Year's Eve. I'll straighten this out. Where's the waiter? Uh, pardon me, are you the waiter? What do I look like with this napkin over my arm? A roller <laughs> towel? <laughs> now... Now, just watch your step, bud. I happen to be a very good friend of Phil Harrison. You can have him, too. 
Now, look, waiter, you get me a paper hat, or I'll tell this young man with me not to leave a tip after he pays the check. <laughs> Graham. The thing I hate is a fresh waiter. Well, 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 look who's here. Cash customers. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Phil. You sure got a big crowd here tonight. Why not? Good music, good food, and just oodles of Harris. <laughs> hey, what more can Ellie well ask? Uh, Say, Phil, I see you've got a bigger orchestra tonight. Isn't that a new man in the front row? Where? A big guy with a mustache. He ain't no musician. That's a house detective. Well, what's a house detective doing in your orchestra? He claims the bass fiddle is full of spoons. <laughs> Are you kidding? Why, that's ridiculous. Yeah, but if you ever look in that tuba, we're cooked. <laughs> hmm. Well, see you later, kids. I'm going over to say hello to Don Wilson. He and Peggy are in a big party over here. Oh, well, time to drop over, huh? Hey, waiter. Waiter, what about that paper hat? Here you are, a gorgeous green one. How can I wear a green hat with my blue eyes? The color's class. Oh, what are you worried about? You'll be asleep in a few minutes anyway. <laughs> I'm going to stay up tonight. I took a Benzedrine. <laughs> Get me another hat, waiter. And here's something else. There's no confetti at this table. When it's midnight and the celebration starts, what am I going to throw? Shake that tuxedo and let the moths fly out. <laughs> now, listen, you one more wisecrack, and I'll speak to Baron Long, the owner of this hotel. He's a pal of mine. If you don't mind, we'd like to order drinks. What do you want, Mary? I'll just have a lemonade. Okay. I'll have a glass Good of... evening, Mr. Burney. Are you having a good time tonight? Hmm. Yes, yes, thank you. That's good. I'll have a... Who was that, Mary? Your pal, Baron Long. <laughs> oh, oh. Waiter, I'll have a glass of Muscatel. Uh, how about you, Dennis? Make fine a zombie. A zombie? You'll have a lemonade the same as Mary. Okay, but I'm going to hiccup... <laughs> All right, Hick, do anything you want. Waiter, that'll be two lemonades and a glass of muscatel for me. Yes, sir. I'll bet you're a beast when you have a couple of drinks in you. <laughs> Quite the contrary, I'm very jovial. And don't forget that confetti. Come on, kid, let's blow our horns and have fun. Heaven's sake, it's New Year's Hey, Jack. Huh? Jack, look who just came in. Where, where? Coming down the steps. It's Rodney Dangerfield, that corny cowboy. Oh, yeah. And look who's with him. Who? Well, I'll be Stella Buggenhaver. <laughs> so she was working tonight, eh? Imagine ditching me for that. Place. Hello, Rodney. Howdy, ma'am. A mighty happy new year to you. <laughs> Same to you, partner. Hmm. And Jack, how be you? I be fine. <laughs> Now, uh, who's the young lady with you, Rod? Hello, Jack. Well, it can't be Stella Buckenhaven. She's working tonight. And where did you get that lovely orchid as if I didn't know? <laughs> hmm? Miss Buckenhaven? Why, oh, uh -uh. Jack, I do believe you're jealous. Come on, Rodney, let's go to our own table. Oh, no, no, no. Do join my little party. I bought that orchid. I'm going to smell it. <laughs> One smell. Sit down. A oh, waiter. Yes, sir. What do you have, Stella? A champagne cocktail, please. A champagne cocktail for Miss Buggenhaven. Do you want to go that high, Daddy? <laughs> Just bring it. And what do you have, Mr. Dangerfield? I'll have a great big tall glass of carrot juice. Carrot juice, isn't that a little too strong for your rod? <laughs> to see? <laughs> oh, Jack, you say the funniest thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always got an answer, ain't it, Phil? Hey, kids, they're still back in the bandstand. Looks like the show's gonna start. Oh, I hope he doesn't ask me to stand up and take a bow. Get the fiddle out of the cage, Dennis. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's about time for our second show. And I see we have a lot of sobralities sitting in our audience. <laughs> Sobralities. And I'd like to ask a few of them to stand up and take a bow. Now, first, I want you to meet one of the greatest movie stars. Oh, I wish he wouldn't do that. <laughs> that famous cowboy of Western pictures, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> Thank 
you, folks. Thank you. I'm sure sorry I didn't bring my guitar. Had to bring his gun along. What a ham. <laughs> and sitting right next to him is his lovely leading lady, that charming girl of the Golden West, Miss Stella Buggenhaven. <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> a very pretty speech, Stella. Brief, but it had a message. <laughs> you make me sick. Behave. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce a very dear friend of mine. A great radio star who needs no introduction. Uh, Dennis, give me the fiddle. I have been associated with this grand personality for a number of years. <laughs> And he came here tonight to relax and enjoy himself, just like everybody else. There. But I know if we insist, we can get Dennis Day to come up and sing a chorus for us. What? Come on up here, kid. Well, I'm glad it wasn't me. I came here to relax and enjoy myself, like he said. Well, sit down. You look like a sap with that violin under your chin. Oh, oh, yes. How are you, Dennis? What's it going to be, kid? I'm going to sing a song I did on the Jell-O program a few weeks ago, Rose O'Day. Well, hit it, Pappy. Hand me his lemonade, Mary. I'm going to put pepper in it. <laughs> You're my filigadoosha, shinamarusha. want his favors, and what does he do? He thinks to the one he loves best that he do. Rose all day, rose all day. You're my filigadoosha, shinamarusha, ballarala, boom, hootie, rose all day, rose all day. You're my filigadoosha, shinamarusha, ballarala, boom, hootie, you're daring, you're darling, oh, you're lovely. Sure, that's what I mean when I say Rose O'Day. Oh, Rose O'Day. You're my sligadoochie, shinamarooshie, ballarala, boom, booty, boom, booty, boom, booty. Sweet Rose O'Day. Thank you, Dennis. That was swell, kid, and I appreciate you getting up here. Hey, Phil! Don't be so obvious. If you can't see your violin, the heck with him. Yeah, that's right, the heck with him. And now, folks, sitting at a table on the other side of the room is my old pal and one of the greatest announcers in radio, Don Wilson. <laughs> come on, come on, Don. Say something, will you? Okay, Phil. Hello again. This is Don Wilson speaking. Hello again. He stole that from me. And I hope you're all having as much fun as I am tonight. I've had six delicious dishes of jello and am I raring to go. Yippee! <laughs> I've been saying jello again for years. It's mine. In a few minutes now, it'll be 12 o'clock, and I want to wish you all a very happy and prosperous New Year. Nice going, Don. Hi, Mary. Happy New Year. Same to you. Uh, Mary, pass me that glass of water, will you? There. Another Benzedrine. I'm getting sleepy. 
Thanks. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Phil, Phil! Oh, oh, yes, yes. And now, folks, here comes the biggest surprise of the evening. I'm sure that with a little encouragement and applause, we can get Jack Benny to come up here... And play a violin solo. Here I come! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed here. Thanks, uh, thanks for asking me to come up here, Phil, although I'm really not prepared. However, ladies and gentlemen, I've had many requests. Sit down, you bum! Sit down! <laughs> one drunk, one drunk in the audience, he had to wait for me. Oh, well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've had many, many requests to play Love and Bloom. And being in a sentimental mood this evening, I'm only too happy to oblige. Love and Bloom, folks. I hope you like it. It's 1942, folks. Happy New Year! thickened, and fold in one can of fruit salad cut into small pieces. Chill until firm, and then serve with a garnishing of spicy mint leaves and bright red cherries. You'll say, as does Jack, that this is one of the finest desserts you ever tasted. Many grocers are featuring canned fruit salad and strawberry jello all next week. Get both tomorrow and make up this grand treat. Just be sure when you buy to get jello. Because Jell-O's locked-in process brings you the flavor for your enjoyment. number of the 14th program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And folks, that's exactly what happened when we went out and celebrated on New Year's Eve. Tell them what happened in the cab on the way home. All right, so I fell asleep. How many Benson Reeds do you think I carry with me? Good night, folks. <laughs>